Welcome everyone to another episode of Clearly Conveying. I am Jeff Poe, manager of the field engineering group with PPI, and joining me today is Mr. Tim Wolf, VP of Engineering for PPI. Welcome, Tim. Glad to have you with us. Thanks, Jeff. Hello, everyone. We have a fascinating topic to discuss today, and that being drive pulley slippage, or often referred to as belt slippage. Um, Tim, to begin this conversation, um, it might be good to start with most conveyor systems uh, in the bulk industry uh, or what type of conveyor systems? What would you say that's like a frictional drive system? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. It, it, almost all of the bulk solids conveyors are done with a friction drive. So what that means is the pulley has a relatively smooth surface that does not mechanically engage with the belt. You're completely depending on the friction between the belt and the pulley and it's lagging to do the driving force. Fantastic. So with that, Tim, uh, when it comes to drive slippage and the problems that customers experience with this, um, generally speaking, drive slippage, we can categorize that or break that into three groups. Um, one being friction, obviously, and the other being uh, belt wrap or the amount of belt wrap that we have around that drive pulley, and the other being belt tension. So let's try to just break it down into those three categories, make it a little simpler to discuss and let's first talk about friction. Um, so how does friction work in a belt conveyor system? And uh, what are some of the things that we commonly use to change the friction on a drive pulley? Okay, yes. Uh, so friction is the amount of force you're able to transmit uh, when the drive is turning and, and applying torque to the belt and trying to move it. Uh, so your simplest pulley is oftentimes just a steel drum pulley, no rubber lagging or anything, and that would have your lowest friction. And in, like in SEMA, you would use a 0.25 or something like that. So as you add... 0.25 being a friction, friction factor. factor. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so as you add uh, components, uh, laggings, that increase in your friction factor, um, you'll get better traction, be able to pull more horsepower, and also have less chance of slip. So uh, most of the uh, normal rubber laggings that we would put on in our industry, you'd be in that 0.35 area. Uh, and, and then you can move into uh, some of the more uh, uh, higher end things like a ceramic tile product where you, you have ceramic dimples that slightly indent into the belt cover and create a little bit of a mechanical action uh, like your gear teeth would, and that can get you into a number that, that SEMA would rate at 0.5 or higher friction factor. So with regards to ceramics specifically, we understand that as we change uh, different types of lagging, as you mentioned, going from rubber um, and then taking a leap up to a ceramic, uh, is there a difference between like a smooth tile ceramic and a dimpled tile ceramic? Yes. Uh, the, the, the smooth will give you some friction, but it is purely friction that you're going to be counting on to create the traction you're looking for. Uh, when you have the dimples, uh, they're raised uh, approximately an eighth inch or so, uh, and when the belt pressure comes down on those dimples, it will slightly indent into the bottom cover of the belt, which creates more of a, a little bit of a mechanical interface. Uh, but in almost all cases, uh, it, it's just a slight indentation. It, it's not actually digging into the belt and causing harm. I see. So would it be safe to say if you were an end user wanting a ceramic type lagging to help prevent drive slippage that you'll want to always go with a dimpled tile and, and if it's in a drive application, try to stay away from the smooth tile? Yes, uh, and, and, and to expand that just a little bit more, anything that's power transferring. So uh, you could have a head discharge pulley that has a backstop on it or a brake or something like that. That's not as common, but on very large mining conveyors, that's a possibility. So typically it's a drive, but yes, you, you almost always would want to go with, with the dimple Fantastic. ceramic. Fantastic. So if there was a pulley that has to transmit torque, Yes. then we would recommend the dimpled tile if you were using ceramic, if Correct. you had to go that far. Correct. Okay, fantastic. Um, so we can understand that uh, when it comes 
to controlling drive slip with friction, there's different types of pulley lagging that's available that can offer uh, different levels uh, of friction, better friction between your pulley and your conveyor belt, uh, which would help prevent drive slippage. With regards to the, the lagging grooving, so we understand that uh, if you have an application where it's generally wet or a lot of liquid type, you know, water type uh, material or slurry on your belt, um, you definitely want to be able to dispel that and get rid of that um, material as it goes into your drive pulley as soon as possible. Um, there, it, there is a lot of discussion out there, um, you know, the standard grooving, herringbone grooving versus diamond grooving. Um, with regards to helping to dispel material, uh, which one of those would be uh, better or more efficient? Uh, we would consider them equivalent. Uh, it, 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 herringbone or chevron, really, it's the same grooves. It's just whether it comes to a point or whether it comes to an offset. Uh, from a performance point of view, they're identical, uh, but they are directional to a degree. If you run them backwards, they'll still work, uh, but there's some feel that potentially that'll hurt your tracking of your belt, keeping it on the pulley. So it is preferred uh, to, to run them in the, the direction uh, 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 of the uh, arrow that they create. Uh, when you go to a diamond or some of your circumferentially grooved patterns, those are bidirectional. So uh, if you're doing a um, reversing belt, it would be common to put the diamond or, or one of those bidirectional uh, lagging grooving patterns on. Uh, Really, from a dispelling the water point of view, they all do the job very similar. So with regards to the diamond groove pattern, uh, there are some fringe benefits to that. Uh, one being that if you're ordering a drive pulley that has a drive, uh, a single drive just on one side of the pulley with a single extension, understanding that herringbone and chevron grooving, as you mentioned, is directional, uh, you would have to tell the pulley supplier your direction of rotation if you were purchasing di or, um, herring or excuse me, uh, herringbone grooving or chevron grooving. But with regards to diamond grooving, it's bi-directional, so you do not need to consider or be concerned about the direction of rotation. Yes. And, and uh, communicating direction of rotation it can be very confusing uh, because you have to establish an orientation of where you're looking from and then define clockwise and counterclockwise and uh, oftentimes people will go to the bi-directional diamond uh, is the most common just because it avoids that confusion. You don't get to where, uh, okay, we misspoke a little bit and I've got this pulley, now what do I do? I put it on my conveyor, I have a drive on it and what have you and have to flip everything or have one of our field engineers come in and take the grooving tool and groove it in place, which is not easy, but it can be done. Uh, so yeah, it, going with the diamond often is a very relatively inexpensive simplification of the ordering and communication process. Fantastic. So with regards to friction, once again, our first category, uh, we understand that we can change the friction, improve it by changing the lagging, and not just changing the lagging, but also considering the grooving pattern in the rubber lagging. and between rubber lagging and grooves, if that's not good enough, we can actually take a much larger step and go to a ceramic type lagging. And if it's a drive pulley, use dimpled ceramic to give you your uh, best resistance to drive slippage. Basic drive pulley. And we're gonna have 180 degrees of belt wrap on this drive pulley. 180 degrees 